I'm making this video as a follow-up video to my original of how to unlock these GM Class 2 RDS radios found in most vehicles after the year 2000. Your radio looks like this and you have one of those. Now, in the other video I demonstrate how to remove chips from the board and I demonstrate the location of the chips, etc, etc. Now, I have found with some further research there is a version of this radio that if you remove the chip from the board, you brick the radio. You, be, you basically make your radio a paperweight. And I don't want people to make their radio a paperweight because I don't want them to come storming down my front door with torches and pitchforks. So I'm making this video as a follow-up, as a cautionary follow-up of which radio not to do this to. Now as you can see, this looks like any of the other RDS radios. This is a cassette CD combo. This came out of a 2002 Chevy Trailblazer, I think. Nothing to it. Now, here's the board. Looks very similar to the other one, but I believe this to be the first version. Everything on this board looks slightly older than the other two in my previous video. Now, the chips that you remove in the other ends, in the other video, are back here. As you can see, the two chips in this radio aren't in line with each other. This is the security chip in this radio right here. As you can see, I damaged it. I had actually originally tried to remove this chip, and I didn't get very far, so I ended up... I tried pin 8, which is back here on this side. It bricked the radio, so I resoldered the chip. I'm not sure what this chip is, but this is these are the two chips. In the version, it's okay to do this too when you remove that chip that it will unlock the radio the chips are side by side see my other video for what that looks like but if the chips are like this and they're opposite of each other one's vertical and one's horizontal do not remove the chip if you have this version and you pull this chip off you're gonna ruin your radio then you're gonna be all mad at me and everybody's gonna be unhappy I don't know why this is just the radio this, this is radio must be programmed differently internally it just these just don't accept it. They don't accept this chip being pulled off and they don't accept pin 8 being lifted. I Like I said, I think it's an older version. The board looks quite a bit older than the newer versions. Before you try this modification, make sure your chips are both vertical. If you have the horizontal chip and the vertical chip in this position, don't. Just don't. the board looks like. I took the liberty of removing the tape player out of this radio just to make life easier. Again, there's the face of the radio. Looks just like the other ones. They all look pretty much the same, but electronically they're different. Now, the other version, which is also extremely common, this one. These also need the on signal from the Class 2 bus in the vehicle. This radio is found in cheaper vehicles like Cavaliers, um, the, the full-size trucks, S10s, later model S10s. This is the base model radio. And this radio also has a security chip in it. It doesn't have normal theft lock, I don't think, but it still needs that quote-unquote on signal from the car's computer. I already removed the chip from this one and it bricked it. This radio is no good. Uh, I will show you right now. Here's the plug. It's just a custom adapter. It's an aftermarket adapter that lets me use the older style GM plugs, which my power supply and everything is wired to, and that it adapts to the RDS style plugs so I can switch between the versions without having to have several harnesses laying around. Helps if I put it in the right way. And that's it. The radio does nothing else. It just stays on error and that's it. The, the ones with the fancier display and the RDS and everything, they'll do the same thing. They'll just say error and they won't do anything else. They'll still have a clock generally, but they'll say error. The radio won't work. Nothing happens. 
Now this radio, I just got it at a thrift store locally. It was only 50 cents, so I didn't feel bad breaking it. I ended up using its CD player in another radio that had a obviously broken player module. I'm going to take this faceplate off because it's in such nice shape, and usually these buttons here are all just completely wore off. The faceplate is still good, and it will interchange with any of the other radios, and I'm just going to put this on eBay. So if somebody has wore out buttons, they can fix their radio. The rest of it I'm actually just going to throw away since it's garbage. Now I'll demonstrate the other radio, what it does. It isn't bricked. And that was intentional. It's hard to do this from behind a camera. No life, and the blinking red light. Now, to turn these on, and this works on all of them, you press 5, seek forward, and the power button, and it comes to life. As you can see, the security light stays on. You can do this for 10 minutes. It'll work for 10 minutes at a time, and you can do this turning it on and off 10 times. Then you have to take the power away from it and reset it. I demonstrate that in my other video. As you can see, it works fine. But the only way you can really make these work again, if you switch them between your vehicle, is you have to take it to the dealer for activation. The, 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 there doesn't seem to be a workaround for this particular style board. It, there's no 12 volt on signal. Now I power these with a 12 volt on signal. Some do, some don't. This version period won't work. The newer versions after 2004, like the MP3 model found in the Colorados, the ones that the, the newer ones, they have a slightly different looking button. They're a little bit more modern. I don't have the one here to demonstrate it. That one needs the on signal. It won't work with a 12 volt ignition signal. But a lot of these have that built in, but just disabled. So that, that's what that's what that's how I can usually make these work. So I can just run them off basic wires on my bench. There's nothing special to it. Nothing. There's nothing funny about this. It's just bare wiring right to the radio. Everything's all nice and taped up. Through my adapter, Radio Shack power supply, and Philips speaker. The adapter lets me plug these in as well without having to have specific adapters or multiple adapters. I just have one plug, one plug type, and that's all I use. Just to recap. Just to make sure the just to make sure I'm completely clear on this. 110% clear for everybody. If your chips look just like this, vertical, horizontal, do not try to remove the chip. You will ruin your radio, and that's the end of it. The radio is garbage, you may as well just throw it away. If your chips are if you have two chips in line exactly like this, one here, and there'll be one here. They're both and they're both vertical with each other from looking at the back of the radio forward. You can remove the frontmost chip. I will even show it. I'll show it in Oldsmobile radio since I have it handy. The Oldsmobile version. Different faceplate, same electronics. I've already removed the chip from this one because it isn't one of the Oldsmobile radios that will work without the signal, the on signal from the CAN bus. The chip was there. As you can see, there's a chip here, and they are both in line with each other. This, this is the style radio it is okay for, to do to. I will put a link in this video to my previous video, and that will demonstrate how to remove the chip and what the radio does once it's unlocked. This video is just so people don't brick their radio and get all mad at me.